this little swarm, look what it did for us. It allowed you guys to actually see. Greetings, friends. This past weekend, we were away in Virginia for the Homesteaders of America Conference. I also had the honor and privilege to be a speaker at the event, but I'll talk about that more in an upcoming video. But on the first day of the conference, they had a number of different workshops that were taking place. And one of those workshops were at the farm of Kaylee, a homesteader who raises bees. She's also a YouTuber as well, and her channel is named The Honeystead. Well, since this was our first year as a family raising bees for the first time, we had some successes, but we also had some failures. So I was like, Kaylee, I want to come to your workshop and learn more about raising bees. So we went. And the workshop had a good turnout of people wanting to learn about keeping bees. And for the first part of the workshop, Kaylee covered the basics of beekeeping, going through a book that she is putting together right now. And after going over the basics and taking time to answer a few questions that people had in regards to bees, next, it was time to get the smoker ready to be hands-on with the bees. I really prefer to just go straight for the propane tank. Um, it is not fun trying to do it with a little lighter or trying to like do it with a match. Um, I just grab whatever I can find, um, grass, straw I can put some herbs in there sometimes if you want to what you're looking for is a nice clean white smoke you don't want flames coming out of it and you don't want um, you don't want you don't want to burn your bees so I start it sometimes with the straw or grass or whatever and then I'll put some wood chips on top of it I have a whole little tote that is up in my greenhouse or my bee house um, that will add to it, but basically just apply heat, puff. Yeah, you're gonna see some flames. Um, keep puffing on it. I would advise you not to do this, or if you do do it with your um, key suit on, be careful about your veil, because um, your veil is going to catch on fire. So. Don't lean over when you're trying to do it. This is a little wet, because I literally I just picked it up. Um, so hopefully it'll it'll catch. Which it's not. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so we'll do it again. But wood chips, pine chips, I think are my favorite. They tend to hold the heat really well. They tend to start really well. And a lot of times if you can go collect a whole bunch of it and just keep a bag, like a little satchel uh, where your beekeeping stuff is and then just feed it. Um, I don't do cardboard. I don't do paper. Um, it tends to throw, you know, throw pieces. So, but you just keep it going and I probably, should have gotten my pine chips. So, it's starting. It just takes a little bit of muscle. But this is like the bellow, so it bellows the heat in. The biggest thing is, is just go ahead and get a propane little thing. It's just so much faster. And then uh, I'm smoking you out on here. You're good. <laughs> so nice clean white smoke. I can sometimes get this thing roaring, especially with the pine chips. The smoke, actually what it does to the bees, good question, because I did forget to add that. Um, the smoke makes them think that their hive is on fire. And so what that means is you're distracting them. So their goal is to then go ahead and eat honey um, and store up just in case if they need to escape. So it, it's more, it's not necessarily a calming effect, it, it just distracts them. Um, so it allows you to go in and get in there and do, a, do an inspection. There are certain times of year where I, I, it's, I don't always use my smoker. Um, Right now we're going to. 
though I'm going to, especially with everybody here. I just want to make sure everybody's safe. And I don't think it's, I think it's responsible for, for everyone to have a smoker and to know when it's time to like really have to calm them down. Um, not calm them, distract them. Rephrase my saying. When I can get this really going with the, the pine chips and then I throw some thyme on top of it or whatever, it just really, um, really nice clean white smoke. You just don't want, um, you don't want flames coming out of it and you don't want ashes and you don't want your smoke to be dark. You want it to be nice, clean white. Um, they make, uh, they do make a, a bag of cotton, like undyed natural cotton uh, that you can put in here to light on fire. I, I think it's just easier for me to just go pick the stuff that I have that's on the ground. Um, you know, if I need to weed my garden at all. Just, exactly. <laughs> and with her smoker ready, now it's time for us to suit up and go out there with the bees. And to my surprise, my son Josiah, who's never expressed interest before in keeping bees, decided to suit up and head out there with us. So far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming? And just when I thought my suit was ready, Kaylee noticed a couple things that I needed to improve on my suit so the bees wouldn't get in there and sting me. That right there, see? Go. Ouch. <laughs> I say I, I had the same. So, uh, no, open. it happens, but you know, if a bee's gonna come up, it's gonna be right there. So I zip yeah. this all the way up. Okay. And I, unless you want bee Botox. No. I mean, it does. No, I've it had really, that once already. It would be nice. I did get stung in my, in my, Cheek, and I was like, well, you should have hit my lip. Oh. And then I would have at least been able to put some extra red lipstick on and oh. make it worth my while. But I actually got stung in the lip, so. but I don't need any bigger lips. Uh, <laughs> and then that Velcro. You're that big perfect. Lip. Thank you. And Look at us. Here's good. So I've got two different hive tools. These are the style hive tools that I like. These are J-Hook. Um, these, this is what we, we Cerakote our own. We, I, if I'm going to be a beekeeper, I want to be a little bit extra. So we don't like the traditional beehives and I want to make it look pretty and popping. So, you know, this is the pretty popping for the girls. And then look, we got the, you know, represent Homesteaders of America for the, for the boys. So we do custom hive tools. That's something that we, we have fun with, but, uh. Yeah, we're gonna be a little bit extra. Sometimes they're a little glittery. Sometimes they're pink. You know, I mean, it's so much better than the red. But um, all right, you guys ready? Yes. Okay. You scared? So we had, uh, I have a couple of bees that I'm trying to, a couple of colonies that I'm really trying to nurse right now. Um, so that is a pollen substitute. They just, it, that one swarm that I ended up getting, um, it should, there's just, it's not going to have the resources that I want it to have. Mm. So we are stepping in and kind of helping a little bit to do what we can. Um, so they they found that. Cool. All right. So. Everybody's zipped up. Yep. Everybody's good to go. Uh, let's go ahead. Just kind of follow my lead. We're going to inspect this one. Okay. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to point out a couple of things I want you guys to see, be able to identify. And I'm probably not going to break it all the way down and go all the way into the bottom. I'm probably just going to stick right here on the top. It's enough frames. You guys should be able to see what I want you to see. I strap all of my colonies down. Uh, the reason why is because we get wind. So uh, I have seen people lose lose their hives uh, to uh, to wind lifting up the lid. So it's okay to strap it down. Um, the other things that we'll be doing is putting reducing their entrance down and putting uh, reducing the entrance down and putting uh, a mesh a wire mesh into the entrance so that little mice won't get in there. And then I'll also be adding the quilt box on and uh, getting it really prepped for winter. But I have a couple, have a couple of weeks until then. 
Oh, look, there was a drone. Ah. How do you reduce the entrance? Um, so right now my entrance is full open because uh, this is the one that has that Formic Pro on it right now. Um, and I'm also getting ready to do all my woodenware inventory, but this is the entrance reducer. So in the winter time, I want my entrance reducer to look like this with a little bit of a lip. The reason why is because um, if, if we have bees that have died and that are in the bottom, they can climb over that and still get out. But that's stuff that I check throughout the time. So, um, but that's the entrance reducer. A lot of times I, I really do try to keep them, keep them locked down. Mm -hmm. And this does not need to be, this we can kind of move. Okay, so tips for when you're working your colony. Stand behind. You don't want to stand in front. No, you're okay. <laughs> you guys are okay. Uh, but when you're working your colony, stand behind um, so that you're not competing with, you know, all of this. So I'm gonna give it a couple of puffs. Give it a couple of puffs. This right here is the inner cover. You're gonna hear a crack. If I can, they're really good at propolizing everything. And this is that sticky propolis that I was talking about all along this side here. Um, whenever you're inspecting your bees, Flip this up, make sure there's no queen on here. You're gonna set this aside. So I give it a brief look. I know she's not in here. I know she's probably down below. Um, so, you know, that is what I like. You guys, if you wanna come and walk, look and see, you're welcome to. Just watch your step. Um, but you'll see they're doing a good job filling out. This is mostly honey. There, there might be some brood in the middle. Um, and if there is, then we can show that. That would be really awesome. But, uh, okay, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys this. So this hive tool right here, this little hook, okay? G good tip, when you're using your hive tool, before you start cracking everything open, go through and just break this little seal. Um, this is gonna save your frames so that you're not tearing in your uh, breaking up your frames so and then I flip it around I am very notorious for keeping the same routine this tool stays in my right hand um, if I set it down I'm, I lost it I don't know where it's gone you know so I keep it in my right hand until I need it um, but then I use this little this little J hook and I lift up and so I pump it forward just a hair just so it catches that lip and then that allows me to pull it up so that looks like some nice little honey that these girls are working on mm, so another really interesting fun tip um, why I keep my this hive tool in my right hand is because the front of the hive the front of this frame is going to stay in the same orientation I am not doing this I'm not switching them up. This is their orientation, they already know. Um, if I go to flip it, I wanna see what's going on on the other side. I just do a quick little rotate, quick little rotate. I know this is all, this is not, um, there's no brood in this, there's no queen there. So I had little high frames that I was able to, I could s place right here, but I don't know where they've gone. So. So are the, is the brood normally towards the center of the hive? Yes. Or? So, yes, and you think the center of the hive, that's the warmest. So I'm kind of going straight for that. And I'm hoping that you will see some. So it looks like you have old frames and new frames. All the time, Okay. all the time. And you know, it's really good for me to, when I rotate my frames, how I rotate my frames is, um, I keep them a couple of years and then I do have to go ahead and clean them out. Or a lot of my older frames, they go to my buyers. You know, they, they're, cause it's already established. So whoever, whoever buys. Now, I wanna just explain what I just did. I took one frame out, I made space. Okay, so I bumped these over. I could pull each and every one out, um, 
but this is the one I'm going for because I feel like brood is probably going to be in here because it's closer to the center. So I made some space, bumped this one out, um, and, and still honey. These girls are capping, capping, capping. They're working. No, this is a two layer box. Is the yeah. Thing. It's all together. Yeah, um, they should be down low, but sometimes they're higher up. So we're gonna see. If you wanna inspect the lower box, you have to take the whole top yes. box off. Yeah, and that's okay too. Um, but if we have to, I don't wanna go down into the lower lower because um, I don't wanna open them up all the way being that it is like crazy robbing season. So if I don't see any brood, we're gonna pop into that one, which is fine. So if, if these girls were really, really hot and heavy, and they're doing what they're exactly, they're gonna be, okay, here's a little bit of brood. All right, here we go. Um, so to get the brood out of the way, you can, And look, see that one right there? She's starting to come out. Can you see her right here? Look at her. And then we say happy birthday. <laughs> um, but she is, she's starting to emerge. There's another one. So that's why I'm probably not seeing as much brood on this because this frame, the timeline of when they were laid, um, it, it's now time for them to all open up. And so what she's going to do is she's going to emerge, she's going to clean her hive, you know, she's going to go back to her job. The first couple of days, they're cleaning. So she's going to clean the cell up, and then what that's going to do is that's going to allow the queen to say, oh, there's an empty space right there, I'm going to go ahead and lay an egg. Um, so that is, that is a good sight. So, so but... The outside stuff's all honey, right? This is honey, yes. And so, these in the center of those So, brood yeah, caps. this is brood, mm -hmm. brood cap. So she's coming out, honey, honey, honey. Um, pollen you're probably gonna see further down, but uh, but yeah. Now what is your harvest months for um, honey? So for me, we harvest, okay, ready? All right, good one. Uh, um, our harvest months are typically, we start harvesting like end of July. Um, going into like August area uh, mainly because what we have is we have a dearth period where we don't have any nectar flow so we'll do a harvest we do a mite check and then if we need to do anything and and treat or or whatever then at least there's no honey supers on and you know whatever uh, but typically it's it's the uh, typically it's uh, the end of July so. Okay, and what's the latest that anybody should be part of a state? Uh, for us, that's kind of our latest. Okay. Mainly because of the dearth. Gotcha. So the dearth, they're going to be, there's nothing out there, you know, so they're all going to be really aggressive. Um, I'd rather harvest honey while there's still kind of stuff that they can go and get, um, nectar or pollen or anything. Um, but yeah, uh, that's about our latest. Um, I have done... I think one year I waited a little too long and it just, I didn't, there was nothing really to harvest because they were surviving off of everything that they already kind of produced. And, and when can you start? Um, for us, uh, everything is pretty much capped and ready to go around 4th of July after, after that is when I've been noticing. But even some frames that we have that aren't fully capped, I'll leave them. Um, I might have to do two harvest, you know, it just depends. I just don't want to harvest anything that's not capped um, because I don't want to jeopardize my entire batch of honey because of that moisture content. So you only harvest once? I only do once each a year. One. Okay. Yeah. Some people do too. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to because it's a lot of work and I don't want to take away what they made. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have to feed, mm. you know, that's not my goal. I don't want to have to go and buy sugar. I, if I have to, the volume button I will, um, but that is my, that's just not what type of beekeeper I want to be. But it's not bad if you want to be that. That's, that's on you. You'll figure it out. This experience provided everyone here with an opportunity to get really close to the bees. And Kaylee popped open another hive 
to show us some more neat things. But Josiah also found him a friend that liked to hang out on his head. Five inspection. You have a bee on your head. This has been uh, hanging out there. No, just <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one we're gonna take off because I think this is the one I gave them because they were still bringing in and it's pretty light. So if you ever have to lift, if you ever have to lift a box up, I do recommend instead of lifting straight up because there's so much propolis, you crack it and then you twist it like that. Um, and then you, and then you lift it. You never want to lift it straight up. Ugh, no, it's okay. Oh, that one's honey. So I know I'm going to go straight for this. We did a hive inspection last week, earlier this week. I don't know what day it is. Can you yeah. see that rainbow? Mm -hmm. yeah. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That beautiful little rainbow. Yeah. Not too, too bad. And now those are all workers. Those yeah, are all workers. They're workers. And the, the drones will look up. No drones are bigger. Right? Um, so I have some opened cells right here. Um, so, you know, they might be not a big fan of these. They might be pulling those out soon. Um, and that just sometimes happens. Um, you know, I might have, I did do this inspection when it was a little bit colder last time, uh, last, last week. So that could have played a role into it. Um, unfortunate it happens. But yeah, this is the difference between honey and brood. And see right here, see this bright dark colored stuff mm -hmm. all right that is all pollen that's what they're they're building up building up for pollen Which, if this doesn't them. bother them at all when you pull this out they don't uh not always but sometimes so i angle it and then i just slide it and then that what that does is it um it knocks any bees away you're you're going to you're gonna end up killing a few. I mean, it's just inevitable, um, but it helps. It helps if you slide them out of the way. So, but what yeah. happens with the dead bees? Do they take them out of the nest? Or they do. Or they hide them? Yeah, they go on a flight, and you'll see them. You'll see them. They they'll fly off. They're gonna be holding it. They'll take her off into the distance, and then they do a ceremonial drop, <laughs> and then they just drop and let it go. That's it, huh? But uh. Yeah. One of the things that Kaylee really wanted to show us is one of her queens. So she popped open another hive of a swarm she just caught. Popped a swarm a few weeks ago. Hi, baby girls. And um, swarms in later in the season have absolutely little to no chance of survival. And the reason is because they don't have enough time. They don't have any time to build up. So, so that's why you put that pollen out for these guys? I did. Um, of course the other bees find it. I actually put something in here uh, to see if they were going to take it. They took a little bit of it, uh, but it, it wasn't as successful. Um, but I'm trying to build them up. So I stole frames from my other colonies. Um, I stole frames from my other colonies. Okay, not on that one. Uh, to to give them back so they have a good a really good chance of surviving um, Okay, again when you do this if you pull one frame out It does allow for space this box actually has a little more space. So I'm a little I'm okay making this decision um, Plus There she is okay, Right there. Oh Wow, yeah, she's huge right see oh yeah here. what i want you to see see how all the bees move away from her they're like okay mama we know what you're doing so i um this video you, it's out there I, I it's my september swarm video that I, I posted a few weeks ago uh but this one i'm really proud of i'm really proud of her i was scared that i didn't get her because normally i can see her but by the sound i heard her when I was catching the swarm, I heard the, the, the pip, I heard her do the sing, which meant that she was probably another queen in that swarm. Um, 
but I was so afraid that uh, I wasn't gonna see her through. Um, oh, look, right down below, you see the white larva? See all that nice shiny white? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the stuff that you wanna look for. Nice shiny white. I'm glad you guys got to see a queen. I was like, ooh, I don't know. I didn't want to open up, but then I forgot. So this little swarm, look what it did for us. It allowed you guys to actually see. I'm so proud of this little colony. You know, September swarms are so, um, so hit or miss. You really just don't know, you know? Like you don't know if they're gonna be okay or not. You don't know if they're gonna, they're not gonna have, this one wouldn't have survived. There's no way. Um, they just, they, they didn't have enough time. So. From an older beekeeper is the only, the main thing that you can ever do, that you can do when it comes to winterizing your bees and getting into winter is say a prayer. So yeah. that's all you can do. Um, you know, but yeah, beekeeping is fun. I hope that this, I am excited for you guys. I want you, I want to hear what's going to happen. I want to hear you guys getting into bees. It's not as scary, you know? I mean, it can be, but it's a lot. But you know what? One thing at a time, you got the book, you got the basis, you got the guideline. Um, you know, start there. You're starting here. That's huge. Next, after hanging out with Kaylee and her bees, we walked around her farm to see what else she has here. The kids found her goats, which they really, really like. They enjoyed feeding them different things like grass and whatever else they found. But Kaylee also has some cattle that I really like. I think they're just beautiful. They're American white. They're mostly white with a black nose, black ears, and a few black spots. She also has a really beautiful longhorn. Uh-oh. Well, after looking around, it was time to harvest some honey. Kaylee set aside some honey for us to harvest specifically for this workshop. And for this part, Kaylee's dad helped her out using an uncapping scratcher and a hive butler to uncap the honey before putting it in the extractor. Look at that dark, rich honey. It just looks beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Such a beautiful color. Would you like to have me do the rest? Yeah, like that. Well, we're gonna spin it. Um, there's a few ways that if you want to harvest honey, you could, uh, if you don't have a spinner, you can do a crush and strain method, which is essentially- Okay, see how it's uncapped now? And straining yeah. it. And that's what, you know, where it does. And it keeps it pretty clean, you know, when it does it. Um, this is a very messy job, yeah. and you want to do it in like an enclosed area away from your bees, because the bees would be like all over these windows and everything if you, do it close. Uh, one of the guys that when we started taking some of the classes a long, long time ago, he left his, from his honey house, he left the windows open and they literally just came in and just hey, ran yeah. him out of the, Yeah. yeah. so you want to stay away from the bees when you're doing this because they want their honey. Well, you saw their effect off the teacups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's right now, their survival mode. Right now, and that's why I, when I did get up, when we got into the hives, I was trying to be a little quick because okay. you saw the little yellow jackets on the um, So now you take yeah, this, and then this goes into here, like this. This way with it. There's like little swaths. <laughs> And then you set this inside just like that. Yep. And then, um, now, one thing about honey, that you can tell the difference between fake honey and real honey, is that real honey will rinse off with water, like, instantly. The fake honey that you get, like, at, uh, 
you know, the, the stuff that comes in like bootleg honey, yeah. it will not rinse off with just water. Yeah. Now, when we harvested honey um, this year, uh, the honey from the honey flow, it was a lot lighter than this. Now, this is fall honey, yeah. I guess. Yes. This would be, the, and uh, this is and the it's, aster golden rod. Right, so it changes. And the pines. <laughs> So, so what's, in, what's in fake honey that you know, they add like sugar, sugar. So if you buy it at the store, it says raw honey. Does it have to be raw honey? Yes. I don't go with raw honey. But your best thing, yeah. I'll be honest, five little Yeah. Find a beekeeper. Mm. That's the best. Because That's the best part. It doesn't get much pressure than that. Do you have to get all the caps or will some of them break open? It'll break open. Yeah. I don't either. So when you're spinning honey, don't put your hands in it. We have lids, but you guys are welcome to see. Yeah, you can look and, and see, see what it's doing. How it flings out to the side. And so it's beautiful. It takes anywhere between six and ten minutes, depending on how fast you're gonna go. Oh, that's now cool. what um, okay, so it's really critical you keep this thing clean and you make sure that it's dry. Yeah. Because again, moisture. Right. And we'll get in it. Isn't that pretty? Smells so good. It's like, oh. So what we do is we'll run it for a couple of minutes and then flip the frames over and run it again. That'll make sure and guarantee that we're able to get all of it. Um, if you are starting out one hive, this is not necessary right away. Don't plan on doing a, a, a plan on a honey harvest your first year or beekeeping. Build your colonies up. Next, if you're after, yes, do a honey harvest. But we're also we we're, we're we're not into this for the honey. We like to make bees, so we always leave. We've been we do it one time, we'll harvest one time, yeah. and then the rest we give to the bees to get out throughout the winter. Yeah. And we've been very successful about having bees the next year. If you rob from the bees and you don't, you know, leave them their food, they're going to die. Yeah. And period. That's it. And depending on where you're at, is the variable. Like for Virginia, our area, it's minimum of 60 pounds of honey that I need to leave them. That's minimum. We probably do a little bit more, only because I think we prefer like the 80, 90, um, mainly because our winter, it might be really mild one day. Yeah, January, you can get in the bees at 60 degrees. Yeah, you know, so I want them. And then the next day it'll be freezing. Yeah, so I want to leave as much for them as possible. The honey harvest for us is a little bit of an extra treat. I'm not gonna lie, it's awesome. To, it's, it's what great of a gift for all of your effort that you put into these bees to be able to share with somebody else. That to me is the best feeling in the world when it comes to being a bee It's like a fan, a honey fan. <laughs> You know, it's funny she said that because they have, uh, for people that have asthma, oh, they'll yeah. hook ventilators to beehives. Yeah. And, and people other... can breathe the inside of the hive. Yeah. Mm. I have had it to where uh, a couple years ago, my allergies were always a little funky in the fall. And like right now, I can feel it in my throat when I open up those colonies. So the golden rock gets me Bradley, really, the golden rock. I opened it up and I'm already like, you know, I can feel it in my throat because my body is, it's, I'm right there in that pollen, you know, super concentrated. Um, I heard you can smell the ragweed in the colony. Yeah, is that true? It's more or less the, 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 uh, the aster. So the aster plants right now, so I haven't smelled it quite yet, but it smells like stinky, stinky yeah. beets. Love it. So when you're saying, getting started and you don't have one of those, what would you recommend as far as maximizing your harvest? You can let it just naturally drop. Okay. If you uncap it and if you rest it in that, it would just naturally okay. start to drop. Um, or if you if you join a club, they, a lot of times the clubs have uh, 
take these things and they'll give them to you during the harvest. Not give them more or less like you use them. Use them. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's where you, like your bee buddy comes in handy. They always get a bee buddy. There's so many beekeepers out there and they love people and they're they're like minded like we are and they say, okay, you know, hey, I've got an extractor, come use it. Yeah. The other thing, um, we bought this used and what did we spend a hundred bucks on it? Yeah. They're normally around four, six, six no, hundred, six, roughly. Bucks. This type of equipment is okay to buy used. I, I would imagine it would be absolutely fine. You can sterilize this to stainless steel. Now, that being said, use the equipment, use hives, I would probably steer clear from. I would not buy used equipment. The reason is because of the American fowl brood in the book on the whole disease factor. I really want you guys to learn about that. So on equipment, unless it's been state inspected and certified, I would not buy used equipment. Like hives. But this stuff, any day. And a lot of people, they'll get into beekeeping and it ends up not being their thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of that out there. People and buy, they spend all this money on it, and then they go, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or they lose their colonies, and then they're discouraged. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I just, if I can express over and over again, is just, you're going to lose them, it's going to happen, rip the band-aid off, experience it, move on, keep going. And don't get discouraged. You know? just, just keep going. I mean, when you lose a hive, it's like losing 30,000 of your children. It's you know, I mean, it feels that because we've oh, become very close to them, and and it's like, I mean, that sounds kind of crazy, but it, it's true. You, you know? build a relationship like, with them. I mean, um, uh, but you start right back up. Yep. Keep right on going. But the bees have served their purpose yet, even if That's you've true. lost the colony. Yeah. The bees have served their purpose. They pollinated. And they did what they were supposed to do for even a season. After spinning the frame for a few minutes. They stopped the extractor, flipped the frames, and spun them again. And then after that, it was time to get some honey. And Kaylee and her family blessed us each with our own little bottle of honey. If you get it on your fingers, that's just a freebie. Say thank you to Miss Kaylee. <laughs> I don't know about you, but man, did we learn a lot about keeping bees from Kaylee. And we really had a great experience there. We got to see baby bees, we got to see a queen bee, and man, we also got to have some honey. What a great time that we had. And we also had a really good meal that they provided us during the workshop, in which they had some really, really good butternut squash which is fantastic and they also had in there a cake that was shaped like a beehive that was like whoa that's pretty neat kids look at that and another thing about Kaylee that a lot of people don't know is she's also an herbalist so it was so neat to see her all of her herbs up there and her different tinctures and and for those of you who don't know about Kaylee she also has a YouTube channel as I mentioned earlier in this video as well as on Instagram and you can follow along with her at the Honeystead, so make sure you do. I also mentioned that she's gonna be coming out with a book, but she's also planning to do a beekeeping course that I think will be really beneficial. So make sure you click the link below, so that way you can be one of the first to know when she releases those things. So make sure you follow along with her, and man, let me know in the comment section below how much you like this video. Well, we'll see you next time.